do you recognize the signs yet? If you can't see what's going on yet, then you must be sleepwalking. So many of our friends and family are sleepwalking right now, dutifully following along while something clearly nefarious unfolds in front of everyone. I've been making content about communism for some time now on this channel, especially in the past month or so. It should be obvious why at this point, so today I'm going to go over the goals of communism in the Western world. These were written with the Western world in mind. This isn't a comprehensive list either. The book The Naked Communist by W. Cleon Skousen details at least 45 signs. I have for you the highlights that should give you some pause. So let's go into this because what we're seeing is clearly outlined in his book. These are the highlights. This is, again, not all 45 of the uh, items that he noted. And I want you to bring to mind the image most of us saw this weekend of the Catholic priest in Missouri standing in front of a crowd of people trying to educate them on the good sainted king whose image they sought to bring down, only to be met with threats of their coming for the cathedral. So let's get into this. Skousen's book is the most concise and straightforward source outlining communist goals and ideology. It was written in 1962 by, again, W. Cleon Skousen, a former FBI agent who used many original sources, meaning from the Eastern Bloc, and the best intelligence of the FBI during its investigation of communist infiltration and subversion into the United States. He published in the book a list of 45 current communist goals that was also received and recorded in the congressional record in 1963. Later, President Ronald Reagan commented on him, saying, No one is better qualified to discuss the threat to this nation from communism. Here's a selection of these goals that have spread to pretty much all nations. In light of the Fatima message, you could say that these can give some insight into the errors of Russia. The government found these so useful that they were placed into the congressional record. And I, I have something on Fatima coming tomorrow, so just bear with me. First is the obvious goal. Capture one or both of the political parties in the United States. Get control of the education system. Use them as transmission belts for socialism and current communist propaganda. Soften the curriculum. Get control of the teachers' lobby groups and put the party line in textbooks. Makes sense, right? I'm personally blessed to live in a state with a robust homeschooling system of protection, but in many places in America, it's nearly impossible to homeschool and have it be functionally different from the public schools. And outside of America, it's outright illegal for parents to educate their own children in a lot of places. So think on that for a while. Next, we have these goals. Gain control of all expressions of the written and broadcast word. Infiltrate the means of spreading information. Get control of book reviews, policy-making positions, think tanks, you name it. Gain control of key positions in radio, TV, and motion pictures. Pretty obvious, right? Just turn on the television or read practically any website. Have you seen sports cable TV recently? Or their websites. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about here. If you've wondered why everything, literally everything, is political and has been for the past few years, and especially now, this is why. Some people just want to watch their sports and movies and the rest without a political message pushed, being pushed onto them, and there's nothing wrong with that. I happen to be one of the people but that who really likes to escape once in a while, but it's not possible anymore. And in some ways, that's a good thing, because once a subversion accomplishes this goal, then it becomes obvious for the smarter people out there who haven't been paying attention. Directly connected to this is the discrediting of the culture of a targeted country by degrading all forms of, art, of artistic expression. This frequently requires the elimination from public spaces of actual art, and it being replaced with meaningless blobs. This requires that the arts themselves be controlled so that ugliness is promoted instead of beauty. Remember that the good, the true, and the beautiful all point to God, and the hallmarks of this movement always point away from the true, the good, and the beautiful. We live in an age where it is commonly accepted to reject the notion that there is objective truth, and instead, we as a people speak of my truth, which is by definition an incoherent concept, and it leads to alienation and meaninglessness of life. But to continue... The goals outlined and enshrined in the Library of Congress include eliminating all decency laws in the name of free expression. In the 1960s, a series of films were released that completely wiped out the decency codes that governed Hollywood, 
leading to the rise of filth we see today. The purpose of that is the next goal, the total breakdown of the cultural standards of morality by promoting obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Mission accomplished, and it began in the 60s, and it was done in the most disturbing way imaginable in the post-war world. Check out some commentary on the movie The Pawn Broker for more information on that. Moving on, this goal will hit close to home for most people who have been subscribed here for a while. The goal of presenting the, shall we say, James Martin lifestyle, and all that goes with it as regular behavior that are signs of good health. Again, sound familiar. Do you see how this stuff fits together? If not, buckle up for the next one. Subvert the churches and replace revealed religion with social religion. There can be no more obvious implementation of this than what has been seen in the Catholic Church since the Council and even before. In an age of Amazon synods, Laudato Si, Assisi prayer meetings, seamless garments, and endless prattling about accompaniment, with the bishops of the Church endorsing all the secular causes of the day, even today with all that is going on, this should be made abundantly clear. Bella Dodd was right, after all. She warned us, and was told not to name names, by Archbishop Fulton Sheen, probably because Cardinal Spellman was on that list. A bishop so popular, and such a powerful, masterful proponent of this message, that he was beloved by the public, and an enemy of Sheen's, which would have harmed her credibility. That's my theory at any rate, I could be wrong about that. Dovetailing with the goal of subverting the church, we have this. Discredit the Bible sacred scripture, right? And emphasize the need for intellectual maturity, which does not need a quote-unquote religious crutch. How often do we see biblical scholars telling us that important major events in the Bible didn't actually happen, and that it's an allegory? Now, to be sure, some of the Bible is an allegory, and to see which parts are, you must go to the church fathers for that, not to some secularized scholar whose goal it is to undermine the church. My favorite example of this comes from a uh, high-ranking prelate who recently told the world that the woman at the well educated our Lord, as if our blessed Lord didn't know all already. This goal and the subversion of churches and schools is linked to the goal of eliminating prayer or any, or any type of religious expression in any public realm on the grounds that it violates the principles of separation of church and state. Obviously, the elimination and discrediting of the family as an institution is a goal with violations of the Sixth and Ninth Commandment that we don't talk about explicitly are being promoted, as is the easy ending of marriage by civil authorities. And remember, while we know that marriage is till death do us part, to the mind that seeks to subvert religion, only the state has the power to end marriage, and these people detest marriage. Part of the subversion of the family is the separation of parents from their children, not merely through schools, but through state mechanisms to put children under direct control by the state. Use all the social buzzwords you want that are floating around today. Why are the agents of chaos targeting the good sainted king? Those same reasons are applied to the undermining of the family. Oddly, this is directly tied to the goals of taking over both unions and big business. Now, do I need to say more on that? I mean, have you seen what's happening in the private sector? All you have to do is open your Facebook page and see the constant messaging from companies as they promote this social agenda. Obviously, these pieces are meant to fit together. Bella Dodd and AA1025 spoke of subverting the church through the placing of men not fit to be priests into the seminaries and priesthood, leading to the crimes we can't speak about here that would come later, as well as the promoting of, those, of the social gospel or gospel of liberation that we're so familiar with today. The subversion of big business and labor is tied to the subversion of the political parties and the entertainment industry. And all of that is tied to the state of the schools and their use as a mechanism of power of the subverted state to really make the overt changes that are being called for. Not all communist takeovers are overtly messy in nature. I say overtly because we know what the consequences of this movement has been. It has included the rise of medical Moloch worship, and it being a state-protected industry that is promoted with public money around the world, targeting the nations least equipped to defend themselves against this kind of subversion. A question we should ask ourselves is this, has America become the instrument for spreading the errors of Russia? If so, what can we do about this? If nothing is done, what will America's fate be? These are uncomfortable questions to ponder, but we as good, God-fearing Catholics must ask these questions and amend our lives accordingly. There are other goals. Like I said, there are 45 of them. 
If you want to see the whole list, either pick up a copy of The Naked Communist or go to the Sources blog at returntotradition.org and have a look at today's show notes for a link to the article I borrowed this from. See for yourself and then ask yourself how this fits into the Fatima message. Barring some major news tomorrow, I'll have something on the Fatima message for you to consider that will go with this podcast today. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.